Next question, what do you guys think is the legacy of AMD Mantle? Do you expect anything like that in the future? It's a pretty interesting feature itself back in the day when it was first announced. It was kind of, yeah, maybe it hasn't got as much fanfare over the years as it maybe should have because Mantle, if you weren't aware, eventually became the Vulkan API that we have today for games and was sort of the first of those lower level APIs like mm -hmm. DirectX 12. So DirectX 12 came later, whether or not they saw Mantle and then made DirectX 12 or whether they were making it at the same time. They're almost certainly making that sort of thing at the same time. But it was sort of the first release of that sort of technology. And yeah, it's interesting how today a lot of games are built on that sort of technology, but I think it didn't really have, I guess, the buzz that some, like features of today like DLSS mm -hmm. has. And I think it's rare as well for AMD to have that sort of feature first. They're often very often a second to these sort of technologies. Things like, you know, especially in the current generation, they were second to ray tracing, second to mm -hmm. um, image reconstruction technology. So to have AMD be the first in that sort of thing back then, I guess. I remember it was weird back in the day testing. This is going back a long time. Yeah, so this is like a decade ago. My memory's shaky on this, but I always remember it being a bit of a funny development, a bit of a funny technology because, yeah, it worked really well coding close to the metal, all that stuff's great. For Intel CPUs in a game like Ashes of the Benchmark or something like that, didn't really make any difference. But if you're using if you're using an AMD FX processor using Mantle opposed to DirectX 11 or an older uh, version of DirectX, it was significant because it allowed you to bypass the CPU bottleneck essentially and unleash the performance of the graphics card. And it always seemed like a funny thing that it was almost like AMD were creating an API that allowed either their CPUs to look more competitive in the games that used Mantle or people who are using FX processors get better performance back in the day. And I'm sure that's not what it was all about, but it just, it was funny how it turned out that way because I remember testing and for Intel CPUs, there was, you know, it was a couple of frames different, but if you're using an FX processor, being able to bypass that processor was like 20, 30 FPS boost. I think so, it was, I think it was marketed weirdly at was, the start when they announced Mantle. I from memory, they sort of made it out like it was a feature that would improve performance for their GPUs on like any mm. any computer that you put your graphics card in, you'd mm. get the boost from Mantle. Whereas what it really was, was more, more what you were saying, where for entry-level processors, low-end hardware, integrated graphics, yep. laptops, those sorts of things, if you're running into big CPU bottlenecks, then potentially you could enable Mantle and it would alleviate some of that performance it's issue pretty well what we saw give you a performance boost which did was true that is what happened mm -hmm. um but i think it kind of over time didn't get much fanfare because most people had high-end systems mm -hmm. where you bought the new amd gpu it was already fast enough mantle made very little difference whereas obviously today we don't really think yeah, about think, those apis anymore it's kind no. of like most stuff and is built back on then level. it would have got much more fanfare and and generated much more hype if an AMD FX CPU was the norm. That's right. Yeah, then, of course. Then yeah. everyone would have been like, we have to use this. You know, yeah. the, the boost is incredible. But as I said, if you already had a, a reasonably decent Intel CPU, the game was next to nothing, uh, as I recall. Yeah, so that's it, pretty much right. Yep. Yeah, made it a bit pointless for the bulk of gamers. Yeah, so I think the legacy is obviously very clear in that it, it's become Vulkan, which I guess... You know, more games use DirectX 12, at least on Windows PC, than use Vulkan. But it's still around. Like, Vulkan is an API. It's used for things yeah, like... Yeah, we test a few games the, with it. There's the DX to Vulkan trans translation layer, whatever it's called, for mm. the Steam Deck, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it certainly has lived on, but obviously it's not talked about as much of a feature anymore. So, yeah. 